Segment four, fixing it, left turn. Quote, a lot here you have to defend, Tim. I spent the first 10 years of my career as a congressional scholar which is where a lot of people wish you had remained, I'm sure. <laughs> the more I studied politicians, the more I respected them. Let me repeat that to our astonished listeners. The more I studied politicians, the more I respected them. That's true. I spent the next eight years as a media scholar. The more I studied journalists, the less I respected them. The remedies that I suggest involve ways to make journalists more like politicians. Step one, why did you come to respect politicians as you studied them? You know, partly it's just uh, studying Congress. So it's one, it's amazing um, uh, how transparent they are with their views, how upfront they are. I've always respected that. Uh, the other thing, I spent 10 days uh, following a state senator in Maryland. His name's Alex Mooney. He's now the chairman of the Republican Party of uh, Maryland. And um, I had taught his brother, so he allowed me access. I followed him everywhere. And uh, just watching him and the other uh, state senators, uh, I was really impressed. One, just how nice they are, uh, how personal they are. And, and the other thing is how well they get along with each other. Actually, even though even they're... Even deep divides. Yeah, yeah. Uh, you know... Uh, uh, for instance, Chris Van Hollen was there uh, when I followed Alex Mooney. And mm -hmm. Alex Mooney, I remember him, first, whenever he would talk about other state senators, he would always emphasize the areas on which he agrees with them. It was kind of amazing, the, in, including he got to Chris Van Hollen, and he said, you know, on this one, I don't agree with him on anything. <laughs> he said, but he's just such a nice guy. He says, he's almost dangerous because you almost start agreeing with him. Because, and I just was, I was uh, kind of amazed. Uh, uh, so the discipline the, of politics, at least in the legislature, mm -hmm. seems somehow or other to attract or to reinforce transparency, right. Um, it, also, they have to get along with people that are not like mine. Right. There's, they, they have to keep reaching out in, in order in to respect, get... In respect. Yeah. Right. Okay. Right. And what's wrong with journalists? Well, journalists are the opposite on both those two. So I have a long quote from Martha Raddatz. Once she, uh, she kind of got blindsided. Martha Raddatz is? Uh, ABC at least was White House correspondent. Okay. She's on C-SPAN. Uh, I think it was Washington Journalist's call-in show. And a viewer called in and said, well, what are your views? And uh, who'd you vote for last election? And she was uh, kind of dumbfounded and says, well, I can't tell you that. We, we don't do that. That's just not done among journalists. And it occurred to me, could you imagine a politician saying that? Right. You know, what, where do you stand on partial birth abortion, a politician saying? I can't tell you that. I'm not going to tell you. Yeah, exactly. That would never happen. Right. So they're, they're more transparent. Um, and the other thing is just that they, um, they're, they're, as I said, they're forced to get along with, with the other side. And in a newsroom where it votes something like 93 to 7, lots of the journalists are living in places like Manhattan where, you know, their neighbors are not conservative either. They probably just very rarely interact with Republicans or conservatives. Okay. So you have two suggestions. One is mingle with conservatives, left turn. Mm -hmm. Journalists should interact more with conservatives. I'm not suggesting that government mandate this, only that journalists engage in some self-regulation and do this on their own. They should consider that even the most liberal members of Congress interact very frequently with conservatives, close quote. So what do you want? Do you want some... You want somebody who writes for Slate or the New York Times to do what? Go to church socials in Topeka? <laughs> what do you... What? I almost literally suggested that in there. In, in the chapter of the book, I talk about what I call the anti-newsroom. I look for a county that votes the opposite of a newsroom, 93-7 for the Republican. You, you basically can't find such a county, but the one that comes closest is Washington County, Utah, which is in the southwest corner, very, very conservative. Um, everyone's Mo Mormon. It was founded by these Confederate sympathizers, and there's lots of things. His name's Dixie. And I interviewed a man named Tom Sigmuller. It was in my quest to find the most conservative person in the area. It turns out he probably wasn't, but still, he's pretty conservative. Owns a gun shop, and he volunteered. <laughs> Good sign, all right. Living if, in the corner of Utah, the owner of a gun. Go ahead. Yep. So I suggested, you know, if you're a journalist, you want to see the opposite. You know, right. you know how, you know how you see conservatives. You know, here's here's how conservatives see a newsroom. If you would go to Washington County interact with conservatives there. I suggested, yeah, I'll take a vacation. Then this gun shop owner, Tom Siegmuller, said, so yeah, when I, I, I'd, I'd, I'd give people a tour. When I was in college, it used to be the thing, the, if kids had money, I didn't, but if kids had money, they'd go to Europe, they'd get the URL pass and <laughs> broaden their education by, so what you're suggesting is that journalists from Washington, from the, from the, uh, from the corridor, uh, the Acela corridor there, from Washington up to New York, 
ought to tour Utah and Montana and Kansas. If, and if you watch Mr. Smith Goes to Washington, yes. what, the bill that got him in trouble, he had this boys camp and he suggested yes, the yes. same thing. Uh, have people come from the cities into this place and interact and mingle with each other. So, uh, okay. Um, Suggestion two, political transparency. Quoting again from Left Turn, journalists are very secretive about their views and those of their colleagues. Such secretiveness has become something of an institutional norm. Meanwhile, a contrasting norm of transparency exists among politicians, close quote. So you, you uh, mentioned this in the book, and I was searching my mind as best I can recall is the only instance of this I've ever seen, but when Michael Kinsley was still editing Slate, right. he had a poll of his newsroom, who was going to vote for, what was it? Uh, McCain and Obama. What? I think they did it for earlier elections, Oh, they too. did? And mm -hmm. he just posted it online. Mm -hmm. Here's the way the folks who work at our operation vote. And, mm -hmm. of course, it was overwhelmingly for the Democrat. Yeah. But yeah. there was that. That's your standard of honesty. Yeah. And I said that there are some paragons of transparency. First, uh, everyone in talk radio. So Rush Limbaugh, Alan Combs. You sure know where they stand. Agree on nothing, but they are very transparent. And the other is the uh, people at Slate Magazine. So, Tim, why doesn't the market in which, by the way, right up front, in left turn, you disclose your own political views and mm -hmm. your PQ is 13. Right. You are not a liberal man. That's right. You believe in, among other things, the free market. That's right. Why doesn't the free market mandate, why isn't it, why doesn't an editor feel pressure as part of his job to send his journalists out to look, see what the other side looks like. Why don't they all post, at least once a year, a poll of their own news? They don't even have to, I, don't, I think you'd be satisfied, they wouldn't have to say which reporter voted for which candidate, but just how many, uh, just yeah. a poll of their news, right? right. So why right. doesn't the market insist on that? Well, you know, it used to be that way. You know, it used to be all newspapers, for instance, you know, around 1920, just about all they of them. They all had the, known political views. Right, exactly. And that may be where we're heading again. That's uh, an excellent question, why the market hasn't done this. I think the market may. I could almost see, I could imagine, one newsroom, say say Fox News, decides to do this. We're going to publish the PQs. But you realize, what, so what you're suggesting here with this publishing PQs and is um, a direct attack <laughs> on the Walter Cronkite ideal oh, right, of right. Neutral neutrality. It is and dispassionate uh, remove from events. Well, no, you, I, would, I would say... You think that's a false... Do you think well, there's a lot of phony baloney? They, I'd say they still should be dispassionate and objective, but on a website somewhere, report. Here's okay. my political views.